This measurement was carried out on the golf course at St. Jürgen Park in Gothenburg, Sweden. Since we're in Europe, we're measuring in metric units. However, Mosher allows you to switch to imperial units in the app settings, giving you flexibility based on your project's requirements. We started by adding multiple layers to this project, beginning with a reference line created between two points A and B at the start of our close shape measurement. We recommend using a longer first line, typically around 8 meters or 25 feet between points A and B for more accurate results. This reference line serves as a guide to align all areas in the measurement, ensuring a detailed diagram with accurately positioned shapes. Choose a location that's easily accessible to mark points A and B, as you'll return to these points at the start of each layer you add. We begin our measurement at point A, capturing the point, then walk briskly towards point B. Upon arrival, we gently place the device to capture the point. We continue with the perimeter measurement, maintaining a fast pace. When placing the device, aim for a smooth, decisive motion. Look ahead to where you'll set it down, slow your pace slightly and place it down without hesitation. Remember that the device needs to be still to capture the data. For added stability, hold the stick lightly between your thumb and forefinger to minimize unnecessary movement during measurements. As you navigate corners, make smooth, steady turns and maintain a consistent path until you reach your next pause point. Avoid swinging the stick or rotating the device abruptly. Aim for a steady, controlled movement. On grass or uneven terrain, proper handling of the Mosher stick is essential to ensure accurate measurements. When the ground is uneven, focus on keeping the device still while it captures data. This helps ensure your measurements stay accurate even in tough conditions. Remember, this is just a demonstration, so we're focusing on a small section rather than the entire golf course and path. Mosher effortlessly handles curves and elevation changes, saving time and simplifying complex measurements. Before adding layers, let's review what we've captured so far. By selecting the 3D cube view, we can see that each point includes X, Y and Z values. The first point of every measurement sets the base Z value as 0, acting as our reference point for elevation. All other points will show their Z value as an elevation difference either higher or lower than this starting point. By tapping on any point, the cross-section tool will appear on the front canvas, ready for you to select. You can then use it to visualize the length, rise and run between two selected points, showing the elevation difference relative to your reference point. Now, let's add some layers. As mentioned earlier, points A and B form the reference line for alignment, so each new layer begins with these points. For larger measurements, adding layers can take time, so remember to save your progress after each one. If you forget, a reminder will pop up, prompting you to save your changes before adding the next layer. When capturing subsequent layers, simply return to point A so Mosher can determine the relative location of the new layer, ensuring accurate placement of subsequent shapes in the overall measurement. Starting at point A, move quickly to point B. Once the A to B measurement is completed, Mosher automatically switches to ignore line, allowing you to navigate to the start of the first layer. When we reach the edge of the first layer, we switch the path type to trace line to outline the desired shape. We now continue to capture this new layer using the same pace, placement and rotation techniques to ensure accurate results. Once complete, we tap the red stop icon to save this additional layer measurement. Labeling is another useful feature. We captured an additional layer starting from our A to B reference line to a single point to mark where the putting hole is positioned using the points path. Once the measurement is complete, tap on the point, 
select Edit and choose Edit Label. You can name it whatever you like. In this case, we'll call it Putting Hole. The point is now labelled within your measurement for easy reference. We added a layer to capture this winding pathway, which is quite a distance from our initial A to B reference point. The same principles apply. After capturing the A to B measurement, the ignore line path will automatically be selected and each stopping point ignored. Continue walking at a fast pace, pausing every 6 to 8 seconds until you reach the edge of the pathway before switching to the path type you want to use for your measurement. As we measure this curved pathway, notice how maintaining consistent pace and placement ensures smooth and accurate measurements. Remember, this is just a demonstration, so we're focusing on a small section rather than the entire golf course and path. Mosher effortlessly handles curves and elevation changes, saving time and simplifying complex measurements. You'll notice the pathway is quite high, sloping down as we head toward the green, and the app captures these elevation changes, providing a clear visual representation of the gradient. Now that we have a few layers, let's measure the bunker, focusing on its perimeter and volume. Understanding the surface area using the cut and fill feature helps estimate the fill values if you decide to move the bunker to a new location. At the edge of the bunker, we switch to trace line to capture its perimeter, stopping when the timer bar is in the green zone and no later than the amber zone. To measure the bunker's volume in this same layer, we don't stop the measurement once we return to the start point. Instead, we switch to the points path type to capture all the grade changes within the perimeter. For accurate results, use a consistent pattern to capture grade changes, such as zigzagging for square areas or spiralling for circular ones. In this example, we used a spiralling pattern starting from the outer edge and moving inward. The key is to maintain consistency and deliberation in your technique. Capturing volume may require more rapid movement of the device, but it's important to keep these movements planned and precise to avoid unnecessary errors. Once you've captured all of the desired points, return to the starting point of the perimeter to capture the final point for improved accuracy. You can then stop your measurement and save it, capturing both the perimeter and surface area data in one layer. To add a background image for this project, tap Edit, then select Edit Background, and tap on Add Image. Here, we're using a bird's eye view image to overlay onto the measurement. Toggle between the background and measurement to help align them accurately. Adjust the image by its size, rotation, and opacity until it fits the data. Once satisfied with your adjustments, tap Apply to save the background. To access the Cut and Fill feature in Mosher, tap Layers, and then hide all layers using the eye icon. Then enable the layer you want to view, for example, the first bunker measured. Close the Layers menu, and you can then tap on the 3D Surface Mesh icon to view surface area and volume. Then tap on Edit and Cut Fill. Here, you can use the Depth slider to calculate material volumes for filling or excavation, adjusting cut, fill, and net values as needed. When your measurement is complete and all adjustments are made, you can export it in various formats by tapping File and selecting Export. Options include PDF, DWG or DXF for CAD files, and M files for sharing data between those who have downloaded the Mosher app. Customize the export settings as needed, email the file to yourself or a colleague, and your measurement is ready to use.